So this next example is going to be the last uh, scalar um, surface integrals. Um, so this problem was on the notes, uh, but we didn't get to it. So we're going to do it right here. So we want to evaluate the double integral uh, or the, or the, over the surface y plus z uh, ds, um, where s is the surface whose side is a cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 3. The bottom is the disk x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 3 in, in the xy plane, and the top is the plane z equals 4 minus y. So I totally butchered how to say that integral, <laughs> the surface integral of y plus z, and z, s is that. Is all of that stuff. So we have three different things here. So we have a total of three different surfaces, which in, um, is basically equivalent to three different surface integrals. So we got three surfaces. We got the first guy, which is our cylinder. So I'm going to call that S number one, S1. So our cylinder is x squared plus y squared equals three. Uh, we also have um, another one. We have our second surface. Um, I'm gonna just I'm gonna let the plane be the second surface. So I'm gonna say that's the plane. That's gonna be z is equal to four minus y, and we have our third surface, which is gonna be the bottom part, the bottom disk. And that guy is just x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to three. And you'll we're actually gonna call this a little bit different. Uh, once we graph this so um here we have this weird shape so we ha um so you can see that the cylinder is on the xy plane you got the cylinder okay and it's going upward now we don't want all of it right because you can see that this plane four minus y is kind of hitting it so what would that be when y is zero z is four so at four Right, you can see that I'm kind of breaking up the cylinder into into um, a line. So you got this plane. In this plane, you got the cylinder being broken up. So it kind of looks like that. Okay, so my cylinder is kind of slanted. So the plane kind of slices it, and you now have like this weird shape. Okay. So and it's it's broken up into two different into surface number one. So I my first surface is going to be my cylinder. I'm going to call that S one. Uh, my top guy, which is my plane. So my plane is actually this guy right here. I'm going to call that S two. And then I have my bottom part. And notice that that bottom part is just still the circle, still this circle all the way on the x y plane. But it's everything in the inside, so you can kind of think about it as it's kind of solid in here. Now, this guy also has another name. Isn't that just z equals zero? Isn't that just that plane? But the bounds here would be that it's everything that's enclosed inside of that z equals zero. That's um, that's kind of intersecting that that um, particular cylinder. So what we have to do here is evaluate three different surface integrals. Okay, so it's going to take a little bit of time. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's start off with the first type of integral, which is going to be my cylinder. So the cylinder is probably going to be the one that's the worst. So we got to deal with the cylinder. Okay, so we got to find the surface or evaluate this double integral, this surface integral. So we want to figure out what the double integral over S is, well, over S1 of y plus z ds, one. So now what we wanna figure out is we need to parametrize this guy. So we gotta parametrize it. Remember that with cylinders, in order for me to parametrize this guy, which is x squared plus y squared plus equals three. So to parametrize this, we can't parametrize it the same way that we would before. In this case, we gotta parametrize it using cylindrical coordinates. So we're gonna let x equal r cosine theta. Remember, r in this case would be the square root of three cosine theta y is going to be square root of 3 sine theta, and then z is just going to be equal to z. So my parametric equation actually is a function of two variables, theta and z, and it has components of square root of 3 cosine theta, square root of 3 sine theta, and then just a lonely z. So this is one of those unique uh, parametrizations. So in order for me to do that, since this is a unique, a different type of parametrization, my surface integral is going to be just like we did in the previous video. 
So my surface integral over S1 of my function f of x comma y comma z, let's just write it as s. ds in this case is gonna be what we just did earlier. Move this over the region d. And this guy is gonna be um, f, and then we're gonna plug in our parametrization theta and z. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the cross product of the, the partial with theta, the partial with z, da. So this guy is just the one that we, very similar to the one that we did before, okay? All right, so now let's let's try to figure out what this guy is gonna be, so um, the cross product. So I'm gonna take partial theta, partial z, okay? And take the cross product of this guy, i hat, j hat, k hat. Okay, so this guy, I wanna take the partial derivative with respect to, um, with cosine, okay? That one is just gonna give me negative sine, so it's gonna be the negative square root of sine theta. Well, I'm not gonna have enough room. J hat is gonna be the po a positive square root of three uh, cosine theta. And then K hat, uh, well, that's just gonna be zero because there's no there's no um, theta on that in that part. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, the with respect to z, and you can see with respect to z, everything kind of goes away because this guy doesn't have a z, so zero. This guy doesn't have a z, zero. This guy only has one z. That's just a one. So you can kind of see that sometimes this is gonna be a little nicer to work with. So my i hat, uh, my i hat is just gonna be this square root of three cosine theta zero zero one minus j hat negative square root of three sine theta zero zero one plus k hat negative square root of three sine theta negative square root of three cosine theta zero zero and what this is going to give me is just going to give me square root of three cosine theta in the i direction, and then a positive square root of three sine theta in the j direction. So that's what I end up getting, and nothing in the k direction. Okay, and this kind of makes sense because if it's a cylinder, we want this to kind of be like in the, in um, uh, oh no, never mind. We're not talking about flux. <laughs> okay, let's okay, let's just gonna we're we're just gonna leave it like that. Okay, so this is just going to be my um, my cross product. Well, we can't really talk about it. We're just basically finding a normal vector, right? And you can see that the normal vectors are going outward. Okay. So now that we found that, we need to find X or the magnitude. R theta cross with Rz. So the magnitude is going to be the square root of the sum of squares. So when I square that, it's going to just give me 3 cosine squared theta plus 3 sine squared theta. Okay, and that's just gonna give me square root of three. Okay, so that guy is what we're gonna plug into here. So let's find our double integral. So my double integral over S1. So remember that I have Y plus Z as my density. So Y in this case is the square root of three sine theta. My Z is just Z. And my ds1 is just going to be the what we just found, the cross product, which is the square root of 3, and then my da. So I can take out the square root of 3 out and just take the double integral of square root of 3 sine theta plus z. Now, what's going to be my limits of integration? Okay, so we got to figure that out. So you can kind of see that we should probably convert this guy. Since we converted this guy to polar, we can kind of think about what theta and z are going to be. Well, if you think about theta, theta is super easy because theta is inside the cylinder. is just 0 to 2 pi. So that one's pretty straightforward. Now, what about my cylinder? So if you go back to the cylinder, you can see that it's an upper minus lower problem. 
So it goes from the bottom of the cylinder, which is z equals zero, all the way to the top of the cylinder, which is that plane. Now that plane, in terms of z, well, you know that that plane is just going to be z equals 4 minus y. So that means that my z is between 0, which is the bottom of the cylinder, to 4 minus y. y, however, when we want to convert it to x, uh, uh, z's and thetas, you can see that y as a parametric equation is square root of sine theta. So z is going to be between 0 and 4 minus square root of 3 sine theta. So those are going to be my limits of integration, 0 to 4 minus square root of 3 sine theta. So it's going to be dz d theta. Okay, and now let's go ahead and take the antiderivative of this guy. Okay, so taking the antiderivative of this guy, you're going to get the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, okay, so this is going to be terrible. Oh, the, oh, we still got a square root outside. So the square root of 3. Then we got the square root of 3 sine theta times z plus z squared over 2 from 0 to 4 minus square root of 3 sine theta d theta. So you're going to get the square root of 3 integral from 0 to 2 pi. So you're going to have the square root of 3 sine theta. 4 minus square root of 3 sine theta plus 4 minus square root of 3 sine theta squared divided by 2 and then minus 0. Okay, so let's simplify this a little bit. So uh, you're going to get a big mess, another big mess. So the square root, uh, foiling that out, I'm going to get 0 to 2 pi. Uh, 4 square root of 3 sine theta minus just 3 sine squared theta. And then that top part, we can just FOIL all that out. Um, so when you, what you, when you do, you get 16 plus 8 square root of 3 sine theta plus 3 sine squared theta all over 2. But I'm going to put each of them over 2 d theta. Now, one of the good things is that a couple things do cancel out. So, for example, uh, oh, wait a minute, this should be a minus. So, this cancels out. That's good. So, what I'm left with after all of that is done, you're going to have a square root of 3 still on the outside. You're still going to go to 0 to 2 pi. And then you're just going to be left with the constants, which is just h, and then these other guys. And that guy's just going to give me uh, minus 3 halves sine squared theta, d theta. So it does clean up a little bit. So you're going to have square root of 3. Um, we're going to go and use the half angle identity again. So this is going to give me negative 3 fourths, 1 minus cosine 2 theta, d theta. Uh, which is further going to simplify to square root of 3, integral from 0 to 2 pi, oops, square root of 3, integral from 0 to 2 pi. So I'm going to get 8 minus 3 fourths plus 3 fourths sine 2 theta, d theta. And you're going to get square root of 3, integral from 0 to 2 pi. And you're going to get, uh, what would this be, 29 over 4 plus 3 fourths, Ooh, wait a minute, this should be a cosine, why am I writing sine? Okay, cosine of 2 theta, d theta. Okay, now I'm going to just take the integral, so it's going to get square root of 3, then you're going to get 29 over 4 theta, plus 3 over h sine 2 theta, from 0 to 2 pi. And you will be able to see that when we do that, the sign isn't really going to take anything in part of it because they're both going to be zero. The only one that really cares about is a 2 pi. So when I plug in 2 pi into the theta, you're just going to be left with a 2 on the bottom. So you're going to be left with 29 square root of 3. And then you have a pi over 2. Whew. All right. So that was just one of them. Now, the other ones are actually a little easier. 
okay because we don't have to worry about all that stuff so that was just the cylinder okay so we worked with the cylinder now let's work with the plane that's going to be another surface integral okay s2 now let's worry about the plane okay so now that we have the plane it's going to be an easy parametrization because you can see that the plane is z equals 4 minus y that's a basic parametrization so that means you get x equals x y equals y and z equals 4 minus y which tells me that the parametrization of x and y is just going to be x y and 4 minus y so it's a lot a little bit easier to work with so now let's plug everything in there so remember that for that one we're going to use a different formula the surface integral is going to be of the function x comma y comma z ds which is going to be equal to the double integral over the region d of f of x comma y comma g of x and y square root of all the partial derivatives so the first one's with respect to x then with respect to y plus one da okay so let's plug everything in there so what you're going to be left with is well um what was my integrand it was i think y plus z yeah y plus z so y stays the same seems the same z is just going to be 4 minus y because that's what z is equal to and then the square root of the partials okay so i'm going to look at this guy because this guy remember this is my g of x y the partial derivative with respect to x is just zero because there's no x partial derivative with respect to one negative um with respect to y is one uh, negative one squared and then you're left with an extra one da y is cancels out over the region d so what i'm going to be left with is just uh, the double integral over the region d of four square root of two. Oh, this is nice and now all we're doing it is in the plane so we got to think about what exactly is going on in the plane so if you go back up to the plane well we need to figure out what exactly is the projection of the plane onto the xy plane and notice that the projection of the plane this guy is isn't that just a cylinder so that's just this cylinder this guy is the limits of integration so all we got to do is convert this guy to polar so it's going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi integral from 0 to square root of 3 4 square root of 2 da oh no that's wrong r dr d theta okay so you're going to get 4 square root of 3. No, wait a minute. That's wrong. So it be over 2. Integral from 0 to 2 pi. And then the, the antiderivative of r is just r squared over 2. From 0 to square root of 3. Uh, d theta now. Okay. So this is just going to give me... 2 square root of 2 on the outside then you're just going to get when i plug in that square root of 3 you're just going to get another 3 so i'm going to get the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 3 d theta that integral is just going to give me 2 pi so you're going to get 6 square root of 2 times 2 pi which gives me 12 square root of 2 pi so that is the second one so now all we got to do is just do the very last one, S3. So I'm running out of room. So S3, in that case, is going to be the bottom cylinder, the bottom part. Okay. So notice that the bottom part, isn't that just Z equals zero? Okay. So when I do my parametrization, it's just going to be X equals zero. Oh, no, no, no. X equals zero. X equals X. So X can be whatever you want. Y can be whatever you want and z is just going to be equal to zero so when i do my double integral i'm going to take the double integral over s3 now y plus z ds so the uh, double integral over the region d y is going to stay the same because that's the parametric equation of y z is just going to be zero that's just zero so that's gone and now i got to take the partial of everything 
okay? Now notice my parametric equation for this guy, I can write it like this, um, r of x, y is just x, y, and then zero. Notice that my g of x, y is just this guy, but there's no x's and y's, so guess what that is? That's just zero. Zero squared plus zero squared plus one dA. So all I'm left with is just that y. So remember, this is still a cylinder because remember that we wanted it for x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 3. So that means this is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to square root of 3. y is r, um, r sine theta. We have an extra r that's going to give me squared. Okay, dr d theta. Okay, and what is that going to give me? And if you end up doing this integral, you're going to see that you get zero. Okay, so what is the surface integral in this case? Well, all we got to do is just add up all of the individual ones. So in this case, for the first problem, we got this guy, the 29 square root of 3 pi over 2. The next one was 12 square root of 2 uh, pi, and the last one was zero. So the answer should be the sum. So our final answer would just be 29 square root of 3 pi over 2 plus 12 square root of 2 pi. And then since the other one doesn't give us anything, that's just going to be nothing. That will be my final answer.